Welcome to the Haunting Harrod channel. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, put a like and write a comment on this video. Have a good time. The air hung thick with the iron tang of blood, a metallic counterpoint to the frantic hammering of my heart. Crimson stained the fallen leaves underfoot, each a grotesque autumnal decoration in the wake of our escape. We have to keep moving, Gritil hissed, her voice barely a whisper above the rustle of dead branches. Her eyes, usually a vibrant emerald, were narrowed with a cold, calculating glint. We weren't children anymore. The innocence of breadcrumbs and gingerbread houses was a lifetime ago, replaced by a brutal calculus of survival. We were fugitives, our names whispered with fear in every tavern and marketplace across the kingdom. Our escape from the royal guard had been messy, leaving a trail of bodies in our wake. The baker who recognized us, the guards at the south gate, even. The memory of my grandmother's lifeless eyes squeezed shut, an unwelcome flicker of guilt amidst the terror coursing through me. Gretel didn't share that weakness. She was pure, unadulterated rage, a barely contained storm ready to unleash its fury. We can't outrun them forever, I cantered, my breath ragged from exertion. My throat felt parched, the taste of iron clinging to my tongue. Then we find somewhere to hide, she snapped, pushing past me, her dark cloak billowing behind her like a phantom's cape. Somewhere they wouldn't dare look. The woods deepened around us, the path barely a trace under the encroaching darkness. The last rays of the setting sun cast long menacing shadows from the skeletal branches of the ancient trees. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig sounded like approaching pursuers. Suddenly, Grittel stopped, her hand raised in a silencing gesture. I froze, every muscle coiled in anticipation. Through the dense foliage, a flicker of light caught my eye. A faint glow, emanating like a beacon in the gathering gloom. What is it? I breathed, hope flickering briefly in my chest. Gretel didn't answer. She stalked forward with a predatory grace, her hand instinctively going to the hilt of the dagger strapped to her thigh. I followed, the silence broken only by the crunch of dead leaves under our boots. As we drew closer, the source of the light became clearer. A small cottage, nestled amongst the trees, smoke curling from its chimney in a defiant plume. A fragile haven in the midst of a hostile wilderness. Someone's home, I murmured, a sliver of unease worming its way into my resolve. Gretel didn't acknowledge me. She was already at the door, her hand hovering over the knocker. Maybe they'll help us, I offered tentatively, a desperate hope clinging to my words. Gretel's lips twisted into a humorless smile. They won't have a choice, she said, a glint of steel in her eyes. The heavy knocker crashed against the weathered wood, echoing through the silent woods. The creak of the aged door sent a shiver down my spine. An eternity seemed to pass before a stooped figure appeared in the opening. A woman, her face creased with a lifetime of worry lines, peered out at us with rheumy, blue eyes. Can I help you, travellers? She asked, her voice a raspy whisper that barely reached our ears. Gretel stepped forward, her voice honeyed sweet. We've been lost in the woods for days, good woman. We're weary and hungry. Would you be so kind as to offer us shelter for the night? The woman hesitated, her gaze flickering between us. My eyes darted around the meager furnishings visible through the doorway, a worn table, a couple of rickety chairs, a flickering fire casting dancing shadows on the walls. We won't be any trouble, I chimed in, forcing a smile. My stomach rumbled in agreement, a traitorous sound that echoed awkwardly in the tense silence. The woman studied us for a long, unsettling moment before grudgingly stepping aside. Come in then, but mind you, I have little to offer. We stepped inside, 
The warmth of the fire a welcome sensation against the chill of the approaching night. The woman shuffled to a cupboard and emerged with a loaf of dark bread and a wedge of cheese. She placed them on the table with a soft thud. Eat, she instructed, her voice devoid of warmth. But be quick, I have much to do before sunrise. We devoured the meager offering in silence, the woman's watchful gaze making us self-conscious with each bite. Where are you headed? She finally asked, her gaze fixed on Gritel. Just passing through, Gritel replied evasively. Her hand instinctively reached for the dagger hidden beneath her cloak, a habit I knew all too well. There's no safe passage through these woods, the woman cackled, a harsh sound that sent a shiver down my spine. They hold secrets, these woods, secrets that can devour you whole. Gretel's eyes narrowed. What secrets, she demanded, her voice laced with a dangerous edge. The woman remained silent, her gaze now fixed on the flickering flames. A smile, sly and unsettling, played on her lips. You wouldn't understand, she finally said, her voice a low murmur. Not yet. A sudden rapping at the door sent us all jolting. My heart pounded in my chest, a trapped bird desperate for escape. Who could that be at this hour? The woman murmured a flicker of worry crossing her face for the first time. Maybe it's them, I whispered, dread twisting my insides. Gretel's eyes met mine, a cold glint in their depths. It was a look I knew all too well. The promise of violence, a twisted logic fueled by desperation. Panic surged through me, choking out any coherent thought. The insistent rapping at the door echoed like a death knell. The old woman, her face a mask of terror, scurried towards a hidden corner behind a heavy tapestry. Stay here, she hissed, her voice barely a whisper. Don't let them see you. Before I could protest, Gretel surged forward, her hand flying to the hilt of her dagger. She reached the door mere moments before the latch rattled violently. Open up, we know you're in there. A gruff voice boomed from outside. Gretel's hand tightened on the handle, her jaw set in a defiant line. Who are you? She demanded, her voice surprisingly steady. Royal guard, open this door or we'll break it down. The voice bellowed back. I cursed under my breath. We were trapped. The tapestry wouldn't hide us both, and facing the guards alone was a fool's game. A desperate plan formed in my mind. Gretel, I hissed, grabbing her arm. We need a distraction. I'll create one. You find another way out. Gretel hesitated, her eyes blazing with defiance. What about you? Just trust me. I urged my voice laced with a desperation I couldn't control. Go. With a final glare at the door, she darted towards the back of the room disappearing into the shadows behind the meager furniture. I took a deep breath, forcing myself to appear calm. With a theatrical flourish, I flung the door open. Three figures stood before me, clad in the distinctive armor of the royal guard. Their faces were grim, their eyes narrowed with suspicion. Finally decided to grace us with your presence. The leader sneered, his hand resting on the hilt of his sword. Just some weary traveller seeking shelter, I said, trying to inject a lightness into my voice that I didn't feel. But it seems your arrival might have interrupted something. The lead guard ignored my attempt at humour, his gaze sweeping the room. Where's your companion? He barked. Alone, am I? I feigned surprise, spreading my arms wide. Just me and this kind old woman. She was kind enough to offer a lost soul some food and warmth. The woman, emboldened by my bravado, emerged from behind the tapestry. Her eyes darted nervously between me and the guards. Indeed, the woman croaked, her voice shaking. Just a weary traveller. Nothing to see here. 
The lead guard continued to scrutinize us with a skepticism that threatened to turn violent. Just some travelers, eh? And where might you be headed? He demanded, his voice dripping with suspicion. I desperately racked my brains for a plausible explanation. Just passing through, I stammered. We're on a pilgrimage, you see, to a, a holy site deep in the woods. The guards exchanged a look, a flicker of doubt crossing their faces. Pilgrimages weren't uncommon, even in these isolated areas. But were we convincing enough? My stomach churned with nervous anticipation. Suddenly, a new sound reached our ears, a high-pitched shriek that tore through the night, followed by a blood-curdling scream. My heart lurched, a cold dread settling in my gut. The lead guard's face paled. What was that? He demanded, his grip tightening on his sword. I didn't answer. I didn't need to. The answer was loud and clear in the deathly silence that followed. We sprinted out of the cottage, the guards hot on our heels. The air was thick with the metallic tang of blood and the acrid scent of smoke. The source of the screams became horrifyingly clear as we emerged into a clearing bathed in the flickering orange glow of a burning barn. A charred figure lay sprawled in the dirt, its features obscured by the flames licking at its edges. The guards stopped short, a mixture of shock and horror etched on their faces. What? What in blazes? The lead guard stammered, his voice barely a whisper. I didn't waste time answering. We had a bigger problem. Greytail, her face pale and streaked with soot, emerged from the shadows behind the barn. Her eyes blazed with a fatal intensity, her dagger dripping with a crimson stain that sent a fresh wave of nausea churning through my stomach. Who are they? She spat, her voice taut with barely concealed rage. The lead guard recovered his composure with a visible effort. Royal guard, he declared, his hand gripping his sword tighter. We're looking for two fugitives. Gretel scoffed. Fugitives? We're pilgrims on a sacred mission. The tension stretched taut, a single spark poised to ignite the chaos. But before anyone could react, another sound pierced the night, a low growl that emanated from within the burning barn. The flames seemed to flicker and dance with an unnatural life, shadows twisting and contorting like phantoms trapped within the inferno. The guards exchanged another worried glance, their fear momentarily outweighing their sense of duty. That doesn't sound natural, one of them mumbled, his voice shaky. We need to get out of here, the lead guard barked, finally breaking eye contact with Gretel. Now, with a bewildered shout, they retreated towards the woods, vanishing into the darkness like frightened rabbits. We watched them go, a fragile silence settling in their wake. What was that? I whispered, my voice babely audible over the crackling fire. Gretel's gaze remained fixed on the burning barn, her expression unreadable. Looks like we found ourselves in the middle of something more than just a royal guard hunt, she replied, a grim smile playing on her lips. The barn groaned ominously, a final death throw before collapsing into a heap of smouldering embers. The fire cast grotesque shadows on the ground, stretching and twisting like malevolent fingers reaching for us. Suddenly, a new sound cut through the silence, a scratching noise almost like claws scraping against wood. It came from the direction of the now collapsed barn, sending shivers down my spine. Gretel's hand flew to her dagger, a glint of steel catching the dying light. Stay close, she hissed, her voice low and dangerous. We crept towards the smouldering ruins, adrenaline pumping through our veins. The scratching sound grew louder, accompanied by a low guttural growl that sent a primal fear coursing through me. What emerged from the ashes wasn't something human. It was a creature of nightmares, a twisted amalgamation of sinew and bone, 
its eyes burning with an unnatural hunger. Ad was heading straight for us. Terror choked the scream rising in my throat. The creature, a grotesque parody of a man with glowing red eyes and claws like rusted blades, lumbered towards us with a predatory grace. The stench of burning flesh and decay filled the air, a nauseating counterpoint to the pounding of my heart. Grittil, ever the pragmatist, didn't hesitate. In a blur of motion, she lunged forward, her dagger flashing in the dying embers. The creature swiped at her with a clawed hand, but she twisted aside, her agility honed by years of living by the blade. Her return strike found its mark, burying the dagger deep into the creature's fleshy shoulder. It roared, a sound that shook the very ground beneath our feet, and lashed out blindly. Gretel badly evaded its grasp, rolling across the ashen ground with a grunt of pain. I stumbled back, adrenaline battling with the instinct to flee. My hand instinctively reached into my cloak pocket, searching for the small, leather-bound pouch I always carried. A collection of strange trinkets and forgotten spells gleaned from dusty tones and whispered lore. Distracted, Gretel yelled, her voice strained as she rose to her feet, blood staining her cloak. Desperate, I yanked out a handful of shimmering dust, its color an unnatural lavender. With a whispered prayer to forgotten gods, I flung it into the air. The dust exploded in a brilliant cloud, momentarily blinding the creature. It roared in frustration, thrashing blindly in the stinging haze. Over here, you overgrown lizard. Gretel screamed, drawing the creature's attention. It surged towards her, its red eyes burning with renewed fury. This was my chance. I fumbled through the patch, pulling out a small vial filled with a clear, viscous liquid. It pulsed with a faint luminescence, an ancient charm designed to weaken magic rock creatures. Gripping the vial tightly, I sprinted towards the creature, my breaths coming in ragged gasps. The noxious fumes from the burning barn clawed at my lungs, but I pressed on. Just as the creature lunged at Gretel, I hurled the vial at its chest. The liquid shattered on impact, coating the creature in a shimmering sheen. It shrieked again, a sound of pain and fury combined, and stumbled back, clutching at its burning skin. Now, Gretel yelled, seizing the opportunity. She darted forward, her dagger a streak of silver in the moonlight. With a decisive thrust, she plunged the blade deep into the creature's chest. It let out a final ear-piercing shriek before collapsing in a heap of smouldering flesh. The stench of burnt hair and singed flesh intensified for a moment before dissipating into the night air. We stood there, chests heaving, staring down at the lifeless beast. The silence, broken only by the crackling embers of the barn, seemed deafening. What? What was that thing? I finally managed, my voice shaky. Gretel ran a hand through her suit-streaked hair, her face a mask of grim determination. I don't know, she admitted, but I have a feeling this isn't the last we'll see of them. We stood in the smouldering aftermath, the weight of the encounter settling on our shoulders. We had escaped the guards, for now, but this was a different kind of danger, one that whispered of ancient darkness and secrets lurking beneath the surface of these woods. As the first rays of dawn painted the sky a pale orange, casting an ethereal glow on the scene, a chilling realization dawned on me. Willia stumbled upon something far more terrifying than the royal guard, a secret that threatened to devour us whole. Dawn cast a sickly yellow light on the ravaged landscape. The charred remains of the barn lay like a skeletal finger pointing accusingly to the sky. Nausea churned in my stomach as I stared at the ashen pile where the creature had met its demise. We need to move, Gritil declared her voice tight with barely suppressed unease. These woods aren't safe anymore. I nodded mutely, 
My mind struggling to process the events of the night. We were fugitives, yes, but this, this was something more. Something darker, something that defied any logic I clung to. Where do we go? I asked, the question heavy on my tongue. Grittel shrugged, the gesture jerky and uncharacteristic. Anywhere but here, she replied, her gaze scanning the trees suspiciously. We need to reach a town, find someone who might know what that thing was. The walk was tense, every rustle of leaves sending shivers down my spine. We kept our distance from the main path, sticking to the dense undergrowth where shadows danced and secrets hid. Hunger gnawed at my stomach, but the thought of venturing into the open for food felt like a death wish. By midday, the woods began to thin, giving way to rolling hills dotted with the occasional farmhouse. A flicker of hope sparked in my chest. Civilization. Maybe some answers. There, Gretel whispered, pointing to a cluster of buildings clustered in the valley below. Smoke curled from chimneys, promising warmth and, more importantly, food. We crept in the hillside, suspicion lingering in every step. Reaching the outskirts of the village, we found ourselves facing a weathered wooden sign that creaked in the breeze. Its inscription, carved in faded paint, sent a shiver down my spine. Welcome to Grimlock, it read. Grimlock, I murmured, the name echoing in the silence with a sense of foreboding. Doesn't sound promising, Grittel muttered beside me. But we had no choice. We needed information, and maybe, just maybe, a meal. With a shared look of apprehension, we stepped into the village, its secrets waiting to be unraveled. The village of Grimlock was as dead as the name suggested. Weary houses hunched under the weight of their thatched roofs, their windows like blind eyes staring out at the world. The streets were deserted, not a soul in sight. The only sound was the creak of the weathered signpost swaying in the dry wind. This place gives me the creeps, I muttered, pulling my cloak tighter against the sudden chill that pricked my skin. Grittel remained silent, her gaze scanning the deserted street with the practiced alertness of a predator. Maybe everyone's at the tavern, I ventured, more to break the unnerving silence than out of any real conviction. A creaking door hinge shattered the stillness. We whirled around, our hands flying to our hidden daggers. A wizened old woman stood in the doorway of a nearby house, her eyes gleaming like two polished pebbles set in a face creased with a lifetime's worth of wrinkles. Lost, are you? She rasped, her voice like dry leaves rustling in the wind. Just passing through, I stammered, unsure if we should trust this unsettling apparition. Passing through Grimlock, she cackled, a sound that sent shivers down my spine. Nobody just passes through Grimlock. Gretel stepped forward, her voice laced with defiance. We need information. What happened here last night? The woman's smile widened, revealing a row of chipped, yellowed teeth. Ah, you saw the beast, did you? She croaked. Beast? I echoed, a jolt of fear and morbid curiosity coursing through me. A creature born of darkness, she said, her voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. A guardian of the secrets these woods hold. What secrets? Gretel pressed, her eyes narrowed in focus. The woman cackled again, a sound like crows squabbling over a carcass. Secrets that would make your blood run cold, child. Secrets best left buried. A sudden gust of wind whipped down the street, carrying with it the distant sound of a bell tolling. The woman's smile faded, replaced by a sudden look of fear. That bell, she whispered, her voice trembling. It tolls for the shepherd. You shouldn't be here when he comes. Before we could question her further, the woman slammed the door shut, leaving us standing in the oppressive silence that had returned as swiftly as it had vanished. Shepherd, 
I asked, a note of dread tightening in my stomach. Gretel's face remained a mask of grim determination. Looks like we're about to find out, she said, turning away and heading down the deserted street. The tolling bell grew louder with every step we took, its heavy nail a grim drumbeat to an unknown fate. We had stumbled into a hidden world, a world with its own secrets and guardians. And whether we wanted to or not, we were now entangled in its dark tapestry. We followed the relentless tolling of the bell, an unwelcome guide through the silent maze of Grimlock. Every creaking shutter, every swaying shadow seemed to hold a hidden menace, a portent of the shepherd's arrival. This feels wrong, I muttered, my voice barely audible over the rhythmic plunging, like we're walking into a trap. Gretel didn't reply, her gaze fixed on a dilapidated building at the end of the street. A crooked sign hung above the doorway, creaking grotesquely in the wind. The grim shepherd in. Looks like we found the source of the bell, Gretel stated her voice devoid of emotion. The inn looked less like a place of hospitality and more like a mausoleum. Its windows were boarded shut, the paint peeling from its walls in grotesque, scabbed patches. An unsettling chill emanated from the building, a feeling that seeped into my bones, despite the afternoon sun. Maybe that old woman was right, I said, my voice wavering. Maybe we should get out of here. Gretel scoffed. We can't leave empty-handed. We need to know what this shepherd is. What it wants with that. Creature. A low growl echoed from within the inn. A guttural sound that sent a shiver down my spine. Gretel's lips twisted into a grim smile. Seems we're about to find out, she said, pushing the creaking door open with a resounding thud. The interior of the inn was shrouded in darkness, a thick, dusty air clinging to our throats. Moonlight streamed through cracks in the boarded windows, casting an eerie glow on the cobweb-draped furniture. The air hung heavy with the smell of decay and something metallic that made my stomach churn. With each step, the floorboards groaned in protest, the sound echoing through the cavernous space. We crept deeper into the inn, our senses on high alert. Suddenly, a flicker of movement in the corner of my eye. I whirled around, hand instinctively flying to the dagger strapped to my thigh. A figure sat slumped in a chair by the fireplace, its head bowed and obscured by shadow. Who's there? Gretel hissed, her voice sharp as a dagger. The figure remained motionless for a moment, before slowly lifting its head. A man, his face etched with deep wrinkles and topped by a shock of white hair, looked back at us. His eyes, a cold, steely blue, held an intensity that sent chills down my spine. You shouldn't be here, the man rasped, his voice a gravelly whisper. This town is no place for outsiders. We're looking for answers, Gretel said, stepping forward, her voice laced with defiance. What's going on here? What was that creature we saw last night? The man chuckled, a dry, hollow sound that echoed in the stillness. The beast of Blackwood, he said, his voice dripping with a strange reverence. Guardian of the forest's secrets. And what secrets are those? I pressed my curiosity battling with the rising fear threatening to consume me. The man's gaze shifted towards the boarded windows, his face hardening. Secrets that remain buried. Secrets the shepherd protects. And who is the shepherd? Gretel demanded, her tone unwavering. The man's lips stretched into a humorless smile. You'll meet him soon enough. He rasped, his voice a chilling promise. Before we could question him further, a deafening boom resonated through the inn, followed by another, and another. The sound seemed to come from directly above, shaking dust from the cobwebs and sending plaster raining down from the ceiling. He's coming, the man whispered, 
his voice tight with a mixture of fear and anticipation. A heavy, rhythmic thudding began above us, shaking the very foundations of the inn. We exchanged a panicked look. The shepherd wouldn't be easily deterred. Panic clawed its way up my throat. Dust swirled around us in a hazy vortex as the rhythmic pounding from above intensified. The old man stared at the collapsing ceiling with a morbid fascination in his steely blue eyes. Who? What is he doing? I stammered through the choking cloud of dust. The man remained silent, his gaze unwavering from the impending disaster. Gretel, however, sprang into action. We need to get out of here, she yelled, grabbing my arm and dragging me towards the back door. The old man cackled, a disturbing sound that seemed to mock our desperate attempt. There's no escape from the shepherd, he rasped. He claims his due. Suddenly, a deafening crack echoed through the inn. A massive wooden beam groaned in protest before snapping, sharing us with debris. The roof yawned open like a monstrous maw, revealing a sliver of the moonlit sky and a pair of glowing red eyes staring down at us. A low guttural growl ripped through the air, sending shivers down my spine. The shepherd was here. Gretel shoved me through the back door, hurling me out onto a rickety wooden porch. The old man stood at the threshold, silhouetted against the gaping hole in the roof. You open the door for him, I shouted, anger and fear battling for dominance in my voice. The old man's smile stretched into a grotesque grin. Someone had to be croaked, his voice badly audible over the din. Before I could react, a colossal figure descended from the roof, its form shrouded in shadow. The monstrous hand that reached out towards the old man was like a twisted tree trunk, gnarled and thick with power. There was a sickening crunch as the hand grasped the old man, lifting him effortlessly into the air. His screams, cut short by a sickening snap, were quickly swallowed by the shepherd's guttural roar. Gretel emerged from the collapsing inn, her face covered in dust and rage. She wasted no time lamenting the old man's fate. Her eyes locked onto the monstrous figure feasting on the porch, a predator savoring its prey. Let him go, she screamed, drawing the shepherd's attention. It turned its massive head towards her, its red eyes burning with an unholy hunger. Without hesitation, Gretel lunged at the colossal creature, her dagger a glint of defiance against the approaching darkness. But the gesture was futile. The shepherd swatted her aside like a pesky insect, her body disappearing into the distance with a sickening thud. Panic turned to ice in my veins. I was alone, facing a creature of nightmares. The shepherd turned its gaze back on me, its red eyes boring into my soul. A voice raspy and cold echoed in my mind. You will serve. My vision swam, my consciousness slipping into a chilling darkness. The last thing I saw was the shepherd's monstrous form looming over me, its red eyes burning with a triumphant glow. A throbbing pain pounded in my head, each pulse echoing the chaos in my stomach. I sat up, gasping for breath, disoriented and cold. My vision blurred, damp earth, gnarled tree roots, and the skeletal remains of a building rising against a night sky ablaze with stars. Memories flooded back in a torrent. The creature, the fight, Grittel. My heart hammered a frantic rhythm against my ribs. Where was she? Grittel, I croaked, my voice hoarse. Silence. Only the rustling of leaves in the night wind answered. Panic surged through me, a cold dread that coiled around my throat. And the shepherd claimed her too. Suddenly, a flicker of movement in the corner of my eye. I strained to see, my hand instinctively reaching for the dagger strapped to my thigh. A figure emerged from the shadows, tall and slender, bathed in the pale moonlight. You're awake. It was Gretel, her voice barely a whisper. Relief washed over me, 
warm and welcome. But something was different. Her clothes were tattered and mud-caked. Her eyes held a vacant spark that sent a shiver down my spine. What happened? I stammered, pushing myself up from the ground despite the throbbing in my head. Where are we? We're safe. For now, she replied, her voice devoid of its usual fire. But we need to leave. This place, it holds a power that shouldn't be tampered with. Her words felt hollow, devoid of her usual defiance. It was as if a part of her was gone, replaced by a chilling emptiness. What about the old man, the shepherd? The questions tumbled out of me, desperate for answers. Grittle's gaze drifted past me, to the skeletal husk of the inn standing like a grim sentinel against the night sky. They got what they deserved, she mumbled, her voice devoid of emotion. A cold dread settled in my stomach. They, Great Hill, what do you mean? And what happened to you? She turned to face me, a chilling smile playing on her lips. Her eyes, once a warm hazel, now glowed with an unnatural red light. The shepherd offered a deal, she whispered, her voice strangely melodious. Now we serve a new master. The realization hit me like a physical blow. The shepherd hadn't just defeated Gretel. It had changed her, and the horrifying implication sent a wave of terror crashing against my defenses. No, I croaked, taking a step back. Gretel, fight it. You'd have to remember. She tilted her head, her smile widening. Remember what? Who I was? A weak pawn in someone else's game. No, now I have power. We have power. Her words were a chilling promise, and I knew then that the fight wasn't over. Grittle was lost, consumed by the very darkness we'd sought to escape. And now I was alone, facing a creature that had become my former companion, and the terrifying reality that the fight against the shepherd had just begun. The twisted moonlight cast an eerie glow on Gretel's face, highlighting the unsettling red glint in her eyes. My stomach churned with a cocktail of grief and terror. Gretel, my sister, my fiercest ally, was gone, replaced by a vessel for the shepherd's darkness. There has to be another way, I pleaded, my voice hoarse. You can fight it. I know you can. Grittle tilted her head, her smile widening in a way that sent shivers down my spine. Fight what? This power. This awareness. It's exhilarating. This isn't you, I insisted, desperation lacing my voice. Don't let it control you. But my words seemed to bounce off a wall of indifference. The greater I knew, the sarcastic, quick-witted Gretel who would fight tooth, a nail for survival, was buried beneath layers of the shepherd's influence. Survival is overrated, she said, her voice devoid of its usual warmth. Now, let's go. The shepherd, our master, has work for us. Work, I echoed, the word a bitter taste in my mouth. We can't serve this, this creature. Gretel's smile vanished, replaced by a flicker of the old familiar anger. Don't lecture me about choices, she snapped. Remember who dragged me into this mess? Remember who left me for dead in that burning barn? The accusation stung, a cruel reminder of the fear that had driven me to abandon her momentarily. But I held my ground. That wasn't me, I countered, my voice trembling slightly. We fight together, remember. That's how we survive. A flicker of doubt crossed her face, a momentary glimpse of the sister I desperately yearned to save. But the red glow in her eyes intensified, pushing back the flicker of hesitation. There is no us anymore, she said, her voice cold. There's only the shepherd's will. And you, she paused, her gaze sweeping over me with a predatory glint, you will either join us or suffer the consequences. 
The weight of her words settled on me like a physical blow. I couldn't let her become another pawn in the shepherd's game. But how could I fight her? How could I possibly defeat a creature that had so easily corrupted her? A desperate plan started to form in my mind, a gamble fueled by a sliver of hope that refused to die. All right, I said, forcing a calmness I didn't feel. Take me to the shepherd. Maybe I can reason with it. Gretel's eyes narrowed. Reason with it, she scoffed. There is no reasoning with the shepherd. It hungers, and you... She trailed off, a cruel smile returning to her lips. You will make a delicious offering. I winced at the implication, my resolve hardening. This wasn't about reasoning with the shepherd. It was about creating a distraction, a way to buy myself some time, some opportunity to find a weakness, a way to break the hold it had on Gretel. Fine, she said, her voice dripping with disdain. Follow me, but don't expect mercy from either the shepherd or me. With those chilling words, she turned and began to walk deeper into the darkness of the woods, the skeletal remains of the inn a grim sentinel marking the path towards a terrifying new reality. I followed my heart pounding a frantic rhythm against my ribs, a lone wolf facing a pack of ravenous predators, with the faintest hope of saving not only myself, but the sister who was now a stranger consumed by darkness. We delved deeper into the woods, the path treacherous and veiled in an unsettling gloom. The gnarled branches of ancient trees clawed at my cloak, whispering secrets in a language that chilled me to the bone. Grittel, a chilling silhouette against the faint moonlight, walked with a predatory grace, her presence a stark contrast to the unnerving stillness of the forest. The silence was finally broken by a low, guttural growl that echoed from somewhere in the depths of the woods. My hand instinctively reached for the dagger strapped to my thigh, a meager comfort against the monstrous entity we were approaching. That's it, Grittel said, a hint of reverence in her voice. The shepherd awaits. We emerged into a clearing bathed in an unnatural light. A colossal obsidian monolith rose from the center, its surface etched with swirling glyphs that pulsed with a faint red glow. And perched atop the monolith, silhouetted against the moon, was the shepherd. It was larger than anything I could have imagined, a grotesque amalgamation of man and beast, its body rippling with inhuman power. Its eyes, two burning red orbs, locked on me with an intensity that stole my breath. A wave of raw terror washed over me, but I forced myself to stand my ground. This was it. This was my chance. So this is your master, I said, my voice surprisingly steady, the creature responsible for all this suffering. The shepherd let out a deafening roar, a sound that shook the very ground beneath my feet. Gretel flinched but quickly regained her composure, a cruel smile playing on her lips. Insolence, she spat at me. The shepherd offers power, an escape from the weakness of your human existence. Power at what cost? I countered, my voice rising. Gritil is lost to you. Can't you see what you've done? I glanced at her, searching for a flicker of the sister I knew. All I saw was a cold, indifferent gaze. The shepherd rumbled again, the sound vibrating through my bones. This time, however, I could discern a flicker of something new in its roar. Curiosity. Seizing the opportunity, I continued, my voice laced with a desperate plea. This darkness, it corrupts everything it touches. There's another way. Let her go. We can fight you together. For a moment, the clearing fell silent. The shepherd remained motionless, its red eyes boring into me with an unsettling intensity. Then, to my surprise, it spoke. Its voice, a deep, gravelly rasp that seemed to emanate from the very ground itself, echoed through the clearing. An interesting proposition. It rumbled. Gretel's eyes widened in shock. But, Master, 
she stammered. The shepherd cut her off with another low growl. Silence, child. This one, they intrigue me. My heart hammered a frantic rhythm against my ribs. Was this a trick? A ploy to lure me closer before devouring me? There are prophecies, the shepherd continued, its voice laced with a hint of something. Regret. Of a balance, a tipping point. Perhaps you could be part of that. The words were cryptic, shrouded in a layer of mystery. But one thing was clear. The shepherd was considering my offer. Now I had to play my cards right. I don't want to fight you, I said, my voice surprisingly steady. But I won't let you control her. There has to be another way. The clearing remained silent for a moment that stretched into eternity. Finally, the shepherd spoke again. Very well, it rumbled. There is an ancient ritual. A test. Prove yourself worthy, and your sister may be spared. My stomach clenched. A test. But what kind of test? A desperate hope flickered within me, a fragile flame amidst the encroaching darkness. What kind of test? I asked, my voice babely above a whisper. The shepherd's red eyes intensified, focusing on the ancient monolith behind me. The glyphs. Decipher them. Complete the ritual. Succeed, and your sister walks free. Fail. It didn't need to finish the sentence. The monstrous creature roared again, the sand echoing through the trees, a chilling reminder of the stakes at hand. This was my chance, a desperate gamble to save the sister I loved, to restore the light within her eyes, even if it meant facing an unknown danger. With a deep breath, I stepped forward, the glyphs on the monolith pulsating before me, a challenge laid bare. The fate of my sister, and perhaps the fate of this entire forest, hinged on my ability to decipher the ancient language inscribed on its surface. The test had begun, 